Dear brothers and sisters, today, let us delve into the profound truth revealed in the scriptures, a truth that binds us all together as humanity. We are all sinners, yet through the redemptive power of Jesus Christ, we find hope, forgiveness, and salvation. In the pages of the King James Version of the Bible, we discover the universal call to redemption that transcends the depths of our shared humanity. Romans chapter 3 verse 23. For all have sinned, and come short of the glory of God. In acknowledging our shared human experience, the Bible unequivocally declares that all have sinned. No one stands exempt from the reality of sin, for it is woven into the fabric of our existence. This acknowledgement fosters humility and a recognition of our collective need for redemption. Romans chapter 2 verse 11. For there is no respect of persons with God. Before the Almighty, there is no partiality. No one's sin is considered greater or lesser in his eyes. The equality of sin underscores the universal truth that, as sinners, we stand on level ground before our Creator, all equally in need of His mercy. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Despite our best efforts, we are incapable of saving ourselves through our works. The pathway to redemption is paved with God's grace, a gift received through faith in Jesus Christ. This truth dismantles any notion of self-righteousness and underscores our dependence on God's unmerited favor. Romans chapter 5 verse 8. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The pinnacle of God's love is revealed in the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ. While we were still sinners, Christ's death on the cross became the means through which our sins are forgiven. His redemptive act transcends our unworthiness, offering a path to salvation for all who believe. John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The invitation to believe in Jesus Christ is extended universally. God's love knows no bounds, encompassing all who place their faith in his Son. Belief becomes the doorway to eternal life, breaking the chains of sin and offering the promise of everlasting communion with God. Galatians chapter 3 verse 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. At the foot of the cross, distinctions fade away. In Christ, we find a common ground that unites us all, transcending societal, cultural, and gender boundaries. We become one in our shared redemption through faith. 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In the act of confessing our sins, we find the assurance of God's faithfulness and justice. Through genuine repentance, he forgives us and cleanses us from all unrighteousness, offering a fresh start and a renewed relationship with him. Luke chapter 15 verse 4 7. What man of you, having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost, until he find it? In the parable of the lost sheep, Jesus illustrates the relentless pursuit of God for each lost soul. It highlights his boundless love and the lengths to which he goes to bring back every wandering heart. This parable reinforces the universal value God places on each individual's redemption. Luke chapter 15 verse 20 24. And he arose, and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him, and had compassion, and ran, and fell on his neck, and kissed him. The parable of the prodigal son beautifully captures the essence of God's mercy and joy at the return of a repentant sinner. Regardless of our past choices, God eagerly awaits our return, ready to embrace us with open arms and celebrate our reconciliation with him. Titus chapter 3 verse 5 7. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. Salvation is not achieved through our own efforts but is a result of God's mercy. 
the Holy Spirit plays a vital role in our redemption, bringing about a transformation, a washing of regeneration and renewing that allows us to walk in newness of life through Jesus Christ. 1 John chapter 1 verse 7. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son clean seth us from all sin. Walking in the light signifies living in alignment with God's truth. It fosters fellowship with him and emphasizes the continual cleansing provided by the blood of Jesus Christ. Our journey of faith is marked by a commitment to righteousness and a reliance on the ongoing work of Christ in our lives. Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 20. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and, lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. As recipients of God's mercy and redemption, we are called to share the good news with others. The Great Commission urges us to go forth, teaching and baptizing, so that all nations may come to experience the transformative power of God's love and salvation. Luke chapter 15 verse 20 24. And he arose, and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this, my son, was dead and is alive again, he was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. The parable of the prodigal son beautifully illustrates the father's unconditional love and readiness to forgive. It emphasizes the joyous celebration that takes place when a sinner repents and returns to God. God's mercy and grace extend beyond our shortcomings, welcoming us back into his embrace. John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. In arguably the most well-known verse in the Bible, Jesus provides assurance of eternal life through belief in him. This profound declaration encapsulates the core of Christian faith, emphasizing God's love, the sacrifice of Jesus, and the promise of eternal life for those who put their trust in him. Psalm chapter 23 verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The 23rd Psalm, a source of great comfort, reminds believers that even in the darkest moments, God's presence is a source of strength and assurance. It underscores the idea that God's guidance and protection are constants in the journey of life. Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Peter's exhortation in Acts calls for repentance and conversion, promising the blotting out of sins and times of refreshing from the Lord. It reinforces the cyclical nature of forgiveness and renewal that comes through sincere repentance. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. Therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. This verse from 2 Corinthians emphasizes the transformative power of salvation. Believers are not merely forgiven. They are made new in Christ. It speaks to the ongoing process of sanctification and the continuous work of God in the lives of those who believe. John chapter 6 verse 35. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. In declaring himself as the bread of life, Jesus invites believers to come to him for sustenance. This metaphor conveys the idea that true satisfaction and fulfillment are found in a relationship with him. The hunger and thirst of the soul find fulfillment in Christ. Psalm chapter 103 verse 8 12. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, 
so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. In this psalm, the compassion of the Lord is vividly portrayed. The imagery of God removing our sins, as far as the east is from the west, emphasizes the vastness of his mercy. It is a comforting assurance of God's forgiveness and his desire to show mercy to those who fear him. Luke chapter 15 verse 4 7. What man of you, having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost, until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons, which need no repentance. The parable of the lost sheep underscores the lengths to which God goes to seek and save those who are lost. It portrays the joy in heaven when even one sinner repents. This narrative beautifully illustrates God's relentless love and pursuit of those who have strayed. James chapter 5 verse 16. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. James encourages believers to confess their faults to one another, promoting a culture of transparency and support. This act of confession, coupled with prayer, is presented as a means of healing. It underscores the communal nature of redemption and the power of prayer in the process of healing. Revelation chapter 22 verse 17. And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. In the closing verses of the Bible, there is a universal invitation extended to all. The Spirit and the Bride echo the call to come and receive the water of life freely. This invitation encapsulates the openness of God's offer of salvation to anyone who is willing. 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. John emphasizes the faithfulness and justice of God in response to confession. The promise is not only forgiveness but a cleansing from all unrighteousness. This verse encourages believers to approach God with sincerity, knowing that his response is one of grace and purification. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Peter extols the abundant mercy of God, highlighting how believers are born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This living hope is rooted in the transformative power of Christ's victory over sin and death. Dear brothers and sisters, as we immerse ourselves in the richness of God's word, may the themes of redemption, forgiveness, and the universal call to salvation resonate deeply within our hearts. The Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, echoes the harmonious melody of God's love and mercy, inviting all to partake in the boundless grace found in our Lord Jesus Christ. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit continue to guide you in the path of righteousness. Amen.